Hey everybody, my name is Alex. We are in the sixth video of our Ultimate Space Mesh Guide. In this video, I'm just going to kind of orientate you with how to get around now that we have all of our nodes running and we have uh, Docker set up. Like, where do you go for logs? Where do you go? Like, how do you query to see, you know, your layers that you get when you eventually are getting rewards? How do you check the status? Um, things like that, uh, we're going to go over in this article. So first is how do you query gRPC? The short answer is it's the same as when you normally would query it, except for you're going to be putting the IP address of the container. So the first thing we're going to do is actually install Go and gRPC because we, we haven't installed that yet. So let's bring you back to our actual main host and we're going to install go so that's what we're going to do now we're downloading it we're going to extract it we're going to remove any chance of a previous version we're going to change the ownership of the directory we just extracted we're going to move that folder into its installation location we're going to update our profile to have some new environmental variables. Just paste that at the end there. And then we're going to restart our profile or update our profile. And then we're going to install grp curl. So this is basically installing Go and grpc curl so we can query our nodes. And again, it's basically the same as before, except for we're actually going to put the container IP address. So if we go into Chrome, let me check out Portainer, you can see the IP address for each of these nodes. In our gRPC command, we're going to just change the IP address. And that's really um, all that you need to do. So let's uh, give it a second here for gRPC or grp curl. I never know if it's grpc curl or grp curl because I think grpc is like the server and then curl is like the querying part of it. So I think they're just trying to be smooth by making it 1c. But all they did was confuse me. Uh, all right. Hopefully this doesn't take too much longer. Perfect. Let's clear that out. And what a typical, if you were just installing Go Space Mesh and Go and GRP curl on your host, you'd be able to run a command something like this, where you just say localhost, because that's where it's running. But w the containers aren't on the localhost anymore, they're on the actual. Uh, Docker container or Docker system. So we need to put the IP address, which is 172.18.0.101 for node one. We can query that and we can see we're getting the results. So it's got 11 connected peers. We can see we're on layer uh, 8063. Now, if I want to query node two, the only thing I need to do is change this to 102 because that's where our node two is. And that has 13 peers. And then for the third one, you guessed it, you just put three here. So gRPC curl or gRP curl, it works the same. You just have to actually specify the uh, Docker container IP address. So that, that covers gRP curl. Next is uh, public and private nodes. So as you can see on my dashboards here, it is, it is a hot mess. So right now, look how many like connections I have. I haven't actually set it up yet. I'm gonna have a future video on how to set up public and private nodes. And that way we don't have so many peers. Like I have 15 nodes each with like 20 peers. That's over 200 connections. And I have uh, three hosts already running. So we're talking 45 times like 20. That's how many connections I have. It's insane. I can actually feel my network getting a little bit slower. So we're gonna, uh, in a future video, go over public and private nodes. Okay, for updates, it's really simple. You just go into Portainer, you go into Stacks, you click your stack, go to Editor, 
and you're just going to change this to two, this to two, whatever version you're updating it to. And then when you're done, you will click update the stack and it's going to redeploy all of your hosts. And you can actually just change one. Like let's say you have a layer coming up where you're gonna get a reward on two. You can just update two, click update stack, and it's only gonna change one node to the next version. So it's pretty easy. Um, and yeah, I don't wanna make any changes. So it's pretty easy uh, to, to make changes like that. So, um, and then you can just get some, uh, this is just other additional information. Like if you go into your containers, you can actually click the container and get you know how long it's been running for. Um, you can do some things in here that are useful. We'll actually be in here again in a second when we're talking about logs. And I think that is the next, okay, perfect. So logs, there's a few different ways you can do logs. Uh, one is that you can actually go into Portainer, go to your containers and click the little uh, piece of paper here. And you can see it says logs and you can actually see your logs. Now this is kind of a pain. You only, you, you can change the lines and you can do some filtering. Um, you can turn off auto refresh. I actually turn off wrap lines cause I find it easier to read without wrapping the lines. And then I'll just scroll over if I need to, need to see anything. Um, and then you can turn off auto refresh cause it kind of like you can see if I have auto refresh on and I scroll up and I'm trying to look at something, it actually brings me back down to the bottom. So if you turn off auto refresh, you can get a little bit more freedom as far as going around. And then you can just turn it back on uh, when you when you need to. So that's one way of doing it. And you can even download the logs here. Another option is you can actually view the logs by um, let's copy this. I'm just going to paste it over in here. All right. So you need to, you can actually view the logs in your main host. You just need your container ID. And if you are uh, on the container view and you click your container, you can get the ID. So that'll be this um, value right here. And if we close this, and instead of it saying container ID, we actually paste that in. We could see the logs. And this is like a live view. We're, we're following the last 1,000 lines of this log. Uh, so this is what you would see if you actually were running it in uh, you know, your main host. You'd see the logs printed to the screen. And you can just control C to stop it. Uh, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's uh, a nice way to see the logs. Next thing you can do is let's say you have an issue and some, and you want to post your logs to Discord. You could actually, just like before, replace the your container ID with your actual container ID with this little uh, arrow thing, and it's going to put your full log file for this container into this logs.txt. And then if we do ls, we can see we now have a logs.txt. And if we do nano logs.txt, all of your logs are now in this text file and you can post them. And what's cool is you can even specify, um, let me open this up here, Chrome. So you can even specify a sense and an intel. So if you want the last 10 minutes of your logs, you can actually specify the sense and I don't know if there's a mm, they don't show an example of it but you can just put like sense and then whatever like uh, either a timestamp so sense this timestamp or put 42 M for last 42 minutes uh, which is pretty cool there's a lot of really uh, cool things you can do with the logs here so you can do everything with logs that you can do uh, normally, but with this, and they even have full containers that are like log management containers. So if you look at like Docker log management or something like that, um, there's like these whole Docker containers that are specifically set up for doing log files. Let's see if there's a, a paper trail. So logging in Docker, maybe this one has it. It doesn't. There's a lot of different um, containers that you can look into to manage your logging. 
So that's going to be it for this video. And the next one, we are going to talk about uh, actually generating the post data. So up until now, we've kind of assumed that you've already had post data. But this is going to be a complete tutorial. We're going to talk about setting up uh, post CLI and smashing with uh, that. Uh, yeah, we're using post CLI basically. I say smashing, but I have thoughts about that word. Um, smashing, like, is it just running a node? Is smashing creating the post data? Is it all of it? I don't really know. Uh, so I just say generating post data. And then I think smashing is like running your node and getting rewards. So uh, somebody probably knows the answer to that. Uh, so yeah, in the next video, we will talk about setting up post CLI. So I'll see you in the next one.